Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Merlin Glenn, and I'm a technical product manager here at VMware. And I'm actually working on our PKS product, which we announced yesterday for you guys here in EMEA, and we actually announced last week in Vegas, uh, or two weeks ago in Vegas at uh, VMworld US. And so you don't have to pay attention to the disclaimer. That's just a, a copy from some of our previous decks that got seated in there. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about a key piece of technology in PKS. So we're not going to do the product level talk here. We're going to talk about some open source technology that we're leveraging in PKS to make life easy for those guys that are deploying Kubernetes. Um, so what are we talking about? Um, you guys may have seen this slide already. If not, this is a quick view of what PKS is. And if you see here in PKS, uh, hopefully my little slide, my, my red dot will show up, but it's not. We can see that we have a, a, a component called Bosch. And that's actually what's delivering. That's what's giving our uh, Kubernetes clusters to our development consumers. So in PKS, we, we want to make that simple. We want to make the process of, a, of someone called an operator or a site rel reliability engineer, we want to make their job really easy to get these Kubernetes clusters out to the development consumers. Now, what we're doing though is today we're going to crack in, or in this little session, we're not going to talk about PKS as a whole. We're going to crack into the little engine that could or the little engine that does Bosch and Kubo, what's actually driving or what's actually some of the under, underlying technology in PKS. So what's Bosch? Um, I, I'm going to try to define what Bosch and Kubo is to make sense uh, to you guys before we kind of dig into a live demo and, and actually show a little bit of, of why this is so powerful for an operator. So Bosch is an open source project that was uh, incepted at VMware and it's largely it's, it's, it's accepted into the Cloud Foundry Foundation so it's got a really broad community contributing to it now, but it's largely led by Pivotal, which you know was a spin out of ours a few years ago with our spring acquisition. Um, and what Bosch does is Bosch deploys software. Um, in the case of Kubernetes, what's happening is, is Bosch has these, these concepts of some core pieces. We see here number one is Bosch itself. You can think of Bosch um, as it could be implemented as a single VM, it could be implemented as a distributed set of VMs, but in this case think of it as a VM. But it's like a management VM. Um, and, and what it does is it communicates with any given IaaS via something called a CPI, a Cloud Provider Interface. So we're using the vSphere CPI. Bosch actually has a couple of CPIs in addition to that. In fact, I shouldn't say a couple, quite a few, to where Bosch can actually deploy the same software that we're going to talk about, Kubernetes, on Google, on, on GCP, on AWS, on Azure. But we're going to be focusing on vSphere CPI because there's some special sauce and things that we do with VMware to make to make that Kubernetes deployment really enterprise grade. So that's, that's the first component is a CPI. If you look here at points two and three, we have, we're talking about something called a stem cell and a release. A stem cell is, in essence, a bare minimum OS distribution. Um, it's predominantly today, and, and what we're going to talk about with Kubernetes and Kubo, it's, it's an Ubuntu distribution. So it's an Ubuntu VM that's been stripped down, it's a VMDK, and it has a Bosch agent on it. That's really all that's deployed in the, in the stem cell VM. So that's the term stem cell. You could think of it as a VM that can be deployed into an environment and then take on the persona of any type of job that it needs to. Um, and then you have a Bosch release. That's the actual software. So that's the software we're going to be deploying. So you can kind of, at, at a high level, think about it that Bosch is going to take a release in a stem cell, um, and the release is going to include all the software that has to be deployed, all the parts of Kubernetes in this case, and combine them in a declarative manner and create the, the instantiated VMs or jobs that are going to perform the particular functions and roles inside of our Kubernetes cluster. Now the fourth piece that you see up there is the deployment manifest. That's basically a YAML file. So you're giving Bosch a YAML file that defines exactly how it should have each of the Kubernetes uh, deployments exist. And it's not just a day one thing, which we're going to see here uh, in a minute. If it clicks for me. There we go. Um, and so this, this is a, a representation of a Kubernetes cluster, because before this is just generic jobs. And we can see that in a Kubernetes cluster in our vSphere CPI, we're actually provisioning clusters into resource pools. Uh, those clusters, or excuse me, th th those jobs are actually taking the form of VMs but performing roles like master nodes, etcd nodes, and worker nodes uh, inside of our Kubernetes cluster. Now, let's take a little higher level view. What about day two uh, that we're going to talk about with Bosch? So hopefully we have the concept that Bosch does deployment, so we give a manifest, it uses stem cells, it uses releases. Well, Bosch can, uh, Bosch can do so much more. Now, I'm going to, before we dig into the so much more, notice we have Kubo up here and we had the term Kubo. Kubo is a release. Remember in our prior image we have stem cells, releases, and manifests. 
Kubo is just a release. So when you hear the term Kubo, it's a packaged release of Kubernetes that's meant to be deployed by Bosch onto a given cloud or given IaaS. And we're talking about vSphere here. So what we're doing in PKS is we're, we're simplifying all that. We're kind of packaging and hiding all the complexity of Bosch with a Swagger API and, and a UI and including the Kubernetes release and having Bosch deploy our, our uh, Kubernetes instances. But one of the unique things that Bosch does for us day two is notice these boxes, and I, and I said them earlier, Bosch agents. So when those VMs get deployed to perform our Kubernetes jobs, they're also running a Bosch agent. And they're, they're communicating back to the health of it, you know, I'm a worker node in a Kubernetes cluster, I'm healthy. I'm a master node in a Kubernetes cluster, I'm healthy or I'm unhealthy. Um, and Bosch is actually tracking this, so it's day two as well. Bosch is, Bosch is actually taking a look at uh, what's the state of all these VMs and maintaining that state. So that's why we say it's not only just a day one deployment tool, but it's a day two operational tool. Uh, so in the case of this, we can have a failure of a master node. And yeah, we could have some constructs like a you know, vSphere HA kick in and reboot that master node. But what if that master node was actually faulted for something inside of the guest? What if it wasn't necessarily a VM level or physical level failure? You know, maybe we had a breach or we just had some fault. Uh, the, the VM was in, is, was in a, a poor state and we're down a master node. Bosch is actually going to detect that scenario <laughs> and repair the master node. I guess the battery's starting to get weak on this, uh, on this key fob. So um, it's a good thing or a good concept to understand that Bosch does not deploy a one-to-one -one scenario in tenancy. So I, I want to make that, that point clear that Bosch can deploy multiple Kubernetes clusters. And that's, that's what we want. We want operators to have a single control plane for multiple Kubernetes clusters from multiple tenants. And we can even drive, uh, you know, we can drive PKS and Bosch through automation, like we have the little concourse pipeline visualized here in, in our image, or we could use something like vRealize Automation, but we can, we can as an operator, because I'm an operator, I'm, and, you know, operators are the guys that are actually keeping the platform alive for the developers and the agile applications to run on top of them. We want to make sure that we automate how Kubernetes itself is deployed. And Bosch gives us that API, gives us that, that pattern-driven interface, that declarative way to deploy Kubernetes via those, those YAML manifests that we mentioned earlier, that give us the ability to scale to multiple Kubernetes clusters and give us day two operations. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to th stop PowerPointing you guys to death, and we're actually going to the live environment and, sh and show you exactly how an operator is going to interact with Bosch, how, how, this is po you know, how this is powerful and how this works with Kubernetes. Um, Although if you guys do get access to, to the slide, there's a little video. That was just in case we didn't have remote access here. But hey, we have remote access. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll go ahead and log in uh, to a Windows jump box, even though I'm like a big you know, open source Linux guy. Um, and we're going to just pull up the, uh, the vSphere client. And we're going to take a look at what our physical infrastructure looks like before we start interacting with Bosch. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up. And if you guys, if any of you guys have been to the VMware booth here, um, and go to the CNA demo pedestals. We're actually running a CI CD pipeline where we have this little demo app. You could probably go to it right now, like demo.pks.bmwdri.io, and you can see a little spring music app. This is the actual, like, this is the actual Kubernetes cluster running that app in, in the event. So this is PKS K801. And so we can see it's been instantiated by Bosch as a you know, ton of uh, different VMs are serving those different roles, you know, the etcd role. And Make sure we get something to come up here in our, our visual. And we can take a look at our tags. Wow, the visual's really poor here. So if we look at the custom attributes of these VMs that are being created. Uh, and, our, and our window is far too small for us to see that. Come on. Come on. Just dragging us up here. These direct these objects or these widgets. Let's close these guys because we don't need these. You know, we don't need these guys. Uh, come on. Well, these custom attributes, which for for some reason, because I am not a graphical interface wizard with the uh, with the NGC client, um, what you're going to see is these deployment tags and director IDs and and jobs. And you can see that the uh, one of these would be a job which would be master node, worker node, uh, etcd node. You know, we're tagging inside of the vSphere infrastructure what these jobs are. Now, I'm going to go ahead and interact now with uh, a jump box with Bosch. And I'm gonna, what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to manually 
pull the rug out from under one of these VMs. But I'm going to I'm going to view what Bosch is doing. I'm not going to as the operator. I'm not going to have Bosch do anything. I'm just going to take a take a view at what it sees and the actions it's going to perform when I do an external failure inside of the environment. So let me go ahead and connect to our host. Okay, and I'm I'm logged into a jump box. So I'm going to go ahead and SSH into one with the with the Bosch client. Okay, so the Bosch CLI. Oops. Uh, it'd help if I didn't have a period in there. You guys will have fun because uh, if you know me, I'm a notoriously poor typer. So <laughs> I may I may key a couple of things in more than once in this demo. Um, so now, now that we're logged into a jump box that actually has the Bosch CLI, and we can see that we have a lot of tasks we can perform with the Bosch CLI, one of the things I'm going to do is, is log into my environment. So let me go ahead and just run environments here. And I've already got an environment that I'm associated with called Kubo Bosch. And let me just, so I can save myself from having to uh, type in a flag every time I want to execute a command, I'm going to go ahead and set a system variable. And I think I spelled that correctly. There we go. Yeah, so there's our VMs. So, th so this is Bosch. Uh, this is the CLI that I'm interacting with that Bosch instance right now. And what I want to look at is the, the instances that I've actually got deployed um, inside, of this, in, inside of this Kubernetes cluster. So this particular Bosch instance that I'm running, I only have one Kubernetes cluster. I don't have to, I don't have to specify which deployment that I'm looking at. We can see here that I've got... You know, I've got my etcd nodes, I've got three of them, I've got a master HA proxy that's load balancing between my master nodes and uh, six, uh, six worker nodes. Now, I could take a couple of, uh, I can use Bosch to even get some detailed information to kind of explain how Bosch is monitoring some of this. And so I could take a look at the, the processes that are actually running in, in each of these VMs. Um, so we see here that a worker node, because we're running a Kubernetes cluster, is running FlannelD for our network overlay. We don't have NSXT integrated in this cluster yet. We're using open source FlannelD for our network overlay. Um, and we got a kubelet, right? We got our kubelet that's interacting with our master nodes and NetCDs. But you notice Bosch is, Bosch is maintaining the state or maintaining a running view, a consistent running view of what are the, what are the health of all these core Kubernetes components. So what I'm going to do now is, is, is kind of pull the rug out. So uh, I'm going to look at the detail view of our instances. And let me go ahead and grab from master nodes and pull up master nodes. So uh, what my detailed view is giving me is actually giving me the actual VM ID in addition to the, to the unique ID that the, that the object is known as a cluster. So I'm going to find VM4B2. That's one of my master nodes. Right? So VM40B21. And he is right here. So if we could see, and I, I could try to set the resolution a little higher, but if we could see, we would find a matching job <laughs> on the right-hand side. Right Just unpin it. Oh, sorry, this. Here we go. And if we take a look then at our tags, here we go. So we can see, thanks for that, because obviously I don't use the NGC that often. Um, we can see that this job is a master node, right? This, this is what Bosch tagged the job as. So we're going to go ahead and power them off. So now that I'm powering him off, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at the, health of the, you know, the health of this VM again. So let's go ahead and run Bosch instances. Now I know how Kelsey feels sometimes when you've done these. Okay, um, so we can see that we've already detected that we've got an unresponsive agent. Now, if that VM was still up, um, what Bosch would be doing, because we saw that it maintains control of the processes by something called Apache uh, Monit, um, it would actually try to recover the processes. It wouldn't try to rebuild the VM. But in this case, since it can't even talk to the VM, we'll take a look at the tasks. So remember, I'm not asking it to perform, any, perform anything. I'm just taking a look at the tasks right now just to see... Um, you know, just to see what it's doing. So we can see, um, we're looking at all of our recent tasks. We can see that there are some 
Tasks that are completed, but we should, if we wait a second here and run it again, we should see uh, that there's going to be a scan and recover task kicking off here in a second. Give my environment a minute to respond. Still unresponsive, and we take a look at our, our tasks. GVM stats. We'll wait a couple of seconds. Usually Bosch takes about a minute to 90 seconds before it responds, or before it understands that an agent is non-responsive, before it begins to take its corrective action. And what's going to happen is, as we take a look here, if we keep scanning our tasks. In fact, our scan and fix is taking place now. It's, it's a tunable parameter for how fast you want Bosch to check agent status. Um, it, this is a very small deployment, so we left all the default settings. You, you want to sometimes make that larger when you have very large environments because you don't want it to, to fire off and have successive recovery actions. But here we go. So Bosch, is, Bosch has already started to work in this. So we see there's a scan and fix operation taking place in this task 1469. So I was just being too quick with it. Uh, task, you know, let's take a look at 1469. So let's go ahead and attach to that task. Am I looking at the right one? Test. In that fine resource pool. Ah, so I know exactly what happened here. This is, uh, you know, this is Merlin playing around with the uh, the live environment too much. So what happens is, is uh, Bosch actually has a uh, a tag on the resource pool names. So it knows which resource pools to find in the environment. And I'm going to rename this one back to its original PKS. And we'll run a Bosch K. Our deployment. So it actually Bosch told me an error and said, hey, um, I can't find that resource pool anymore that you defined to put the cluster in because earlier this morning I actually renamed the resource pool, not remembering that I was going to be doing this demo. <laughs> um, so this cl it clearly told the operator that, hey, someone else came in and made a, a stupid mistake, which is me. And let's go ahead and run a CCK, which is like a cloud check, and it's going to check these VMs again. And you see how it finds one missing VM, and you know, it knows that that VM is not, not response or not in the proper location. One Bosch. Okay, and we want to go ahead and recreate the VM, and not wait for the process to restart. And yes, and what we should see happening now. So this would have, in Merlin's perfect demo world, where he wouldn't have gone in and renamed the, uh, the resource pool that it was uh, was run on. We should see here in a minute that Bosch is actually going to auto automatically. Um, rebuild uh, the VM. In fact, it's already, it's already attempted to do that. Uh, so it's going to bring that worker node back, in, back to a healthy state for us so we can watch the task happening here. Um, so the point that we're trying to drive here is, is as the operator, even though, yes, Merlin said a falsehood that you, the operator wouldn't have to take an action, if the operator had done this in a production environment and allowed PKS to name the resource pools, which is what PKS... PKS actually hides a lot of this complexity. PKS makes this simple. Gives you pattern, to, you know, gives you pattern responses. It, it ties into your vCenter infrastructure. Make sure your inventory objects match. Um, but if you're a bad operator like me, then you could go in and actually, you know, break things. But hey, anybody can break anything. So we are waiting for our VM to recreate right now, and it should only take us a minute. And once it comes back online, it'll be healthy. As I'm waiting, are there any questions you guys would like to? This process should take about two minutes, two and a half minutes. PKS is not publicly available. It's going to be released in the December time frame of this year. But this, the, the technology we're using here, which is Bosch and Kubo, this is all open source components. Okay, the smallest Kubernetes cluster that you can deploy, uh, it's more of a recommendation. You want to at least have three etcd nodes because etcd is a majority node quorum construct. So 
typically I wouldn't recommend deploying a, a Kubernetes cluster with fewer than two master nodes, three etcd nodes, so you have high availability for your API management services and, and you know, in etcd, and then your worker node sets, that's going to be dependent on how many, you know, you could do one worker node, right, if, if, if you're only going to have a couple of pods, but you want availability, you want multiple replica sets, you would do more, do more nodes. Okay, so we could see here that our process is done, it succeeded already, let's take a look at our instances. And we can see that our, our master node has come back and is healthy. It, that would have all happened automatically if Merlin hadn't have been an idiot this morning and renamed the resource pool. So you guys can all quote that blog and have fun with it. Merlin's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the importance that, that uh, the point that I wanted to dig into with the demo, which hopefully you guys are um, pulling out here, let's, if we open up our recent, oh, here we go. The point that I wanted to pull into is that day two capability. Um, if we come back to this slide. Bosch is going to give, you know, you just saw me do a manual rebuild because, you know, because I had, I had tripped up Bosch's processes and I didn't want to wait another 10 minutes in the demo for it to go through a cycle again and, and find that the, that the VM was faulted. But what Bosch is going to do is it's going to do an auto recovery of anything that is deployed, right? And as long as that release is constructed properly, like we saw in Kubernetes, it knows about kubelets, it knows about kubelet proxies, it knows about the, you know, the, the, the Flannel D plugins or the NSXT overlay plugins, it'll keep all of that healthy. Uh, so we could do a rebuild and repair. Why is that important in addition to when things break? Uh, what if I have credentials like certificates that I have to rotate inside of my environments? I can have Bosch and Kubo just automatically rebuild and rotate. Um, persistent data, like what you guys didn't see, um, is that master node has, a, it has an ephemeral disk and it has a persistent disk attached that are, that are uh, disassociated volumes. We have five minutes left. Um, so Bosch took care of detaching those and reattaching them as it rebuilt the VM. So what it's doing is bringing everything to a clean state that it had on day one, but maintaining that all through the day two life cycle. Um, scaling, uh, we didn't look at our manifest, but I could just, I could simply go into one of the manifests, those YAML files that we talked about, and just tick up instances from two master nodes to three master nodes, or from four worker nodes to eight worker nodes. It's a quick, easy scale. PKS is going to make that even easier for you operators, and that you'll be able to do that through a UI or an API interface. But if I was dealing directly with Bosch, I'd have to, I'd have to actually do that in the YAML file. Um, patching and upgrading, when I need to upgrade Kubernetes, I guess the, you know, the big thing I'll point out before we close up here is what we just did, recovering the master node, uh, is difficult with Kubernetes. Even if you're deploying you know, with um, kubeadmin and you're running all in containers, Kubernetes doesn't maintain the health of the master nodes itself, the master nodes and API proxy services. Those are that's some external projects or external services you have to wrap around that to do that. It really only maintains the kubelets themselves, uh, which are the workers. So having, having a, an operational plane that keeps your master nodes and your etcd nodes in a healthy state is a hard thing to do with Kubernetes, and Bosch makes that pretty easy. And then when you think about patching and upgrading, that's another difficult thing is, you know, uh, a lot of times you have to rebuild your Kubernetes cluster when you want to upgrade to the latest release of Kubernetes, like from 1.6 to 1.7, uh, where Bosch, we could just push in a new, push in a new release, you know, that new release tarball and run an upgrade. And it'll actually, it'll actually scroll through and disattach the persistent data, reattach the persistent data, and bring your, your existing Kubernetes cluster up to current rev without having to affect your workloads. It'll do that and have, you know, the kubelets will be able to bounce the workloads and, and move across the nodes. So that's really the, 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 the key thing here is that Bosch and Kubo, uh, open source components, key pieces of PKS, but they're really, they're really great for the operator to do this at scale because this allows me to have hundreds of clusters, keep them healthy, keep them alive, audit who's doing what, and, and make sure my developers have an API that they can always push their apps to and their apps are always running. That's the key thing. An operator, operator just wants the developers to be able to get everything they need reliably, quickly, and agile and keep it up and running. And, Bosch helps us do that, and Bosch is a key technology in PKS. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there, because I think I've probably consumed my time. And uh, thank you guys for your time this morning. Uh, I apologize for me being an idiot and making the demo not look as cool as it should have been. <laughs> it was still pretty cool, though. I mean, Bosch helped me recover, you know? But in fact, Bosch told me that I was an idiot, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, and if you guys have any questions related to this, we'll be at the, the VMware booth. Uh, their CNA uh, uh, pedestals there and they're labeled with PKS and developer ready infrastructure. I'll be there a little later today. We have other, uh, you know, other resources there that can talk about Bosch and talk about PKS and Kubo and hopefully you guys enjoyed this.